Hi, welcome to this drum lesson for Come Together by The Beatles. So this is um, Ringo Starr, obviously, well, not obviously, but um, Ringo, one of the best drummers ever. <laughs> A lot of people would say he isn't, but I love him. Um, so yeah, this, this pattern is straight away pretty iconic um, drum pattern. Um, it's quite an odd pattern. Um, so I'll just play it for you and then we can sort of break it down. So this is how it goes. Okay, so if you'll see, it's kind of a triplety thing and it's going sort of backwards around the drums because Ringo was left-handed playing a right-handed kit so he would lead with his left hand so going this way around the kit was quite tricky for him for that so it made sense for him to do that so it does make it quite hard straight off the bat but there are ways to make it simpler that pattern um, so if we break it down, we've got two kicks to begin with, like that. And then we've got this little, um, basically four. Triplets on the hi-hat. So that's the first bit to try and get down. And that's right, left, right, left. So it's four triplets, so it's this little bit, and then the one of the next triplet. So that's your first bit. Okay, and then if we want to do this the proper Ringo way, we're leading the triplets with the left hand. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. So six hits on the floor tom and then four hits on the rack tom. Still in triplets, 16th note triplets. Do, 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 do. Now you can play this the other way, leading with the right hand, do the six here, starting with the right, um, which for more beginners might be a lot easier. Remember, this is the hardest bit in the whole track. Once you kind of get this bit down, it feels really nice. Um, the rest of the track is a lot easier, but this is the hardest bit, but it's it's a really cool part. It's a really interesting drum part, um, very musical. So I'll show, you, I'll show you the other way of playing it that's a bit easier if you're, if you're right-handed. Um, so that'd be like this. So you're going, you're kind of just doing the, the opposite of, of what you were doing here. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Yeah. Instead of left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Should have gone up higher there. But yeah, so if you want to be real genuine to the track, lead with the left on the floor tom. Um, so yeah, that's the intro section that crops up quite a lot, a lot, a lot of times in the tune. Um, and that kind of, to begin with, that goes around four times. And then we're into our verse section. Um, let's, let's just get, let's try the verse bit because that is much simpler. And then we can try that bit with the, with the, with the playthrough. So the verse, it's really simple. We're doing quarter notes on the bass drum. Just one, two, three, four. And then we're doing eighth notes on the floor tom, accenting the quarter notes. So it's like this. Okay, cool. So yeah, as I say, accenting the, 
the bass drums and then sorry and then not accenting ones in between Le unaccenting them still hitting it but quieter so you kind of got that do 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 feel and that's the verse so that's nice and simple at the end of the verse you've got this two bar pre-chorus where we're just playing kicks um and there's a little little crash at the end of this floor tom bit going into it and that sounds like this doing kicks on all the down beats but then you're adding this extra kick drum on beats the last 16th note of beat one and then the last 16th note of beat three so it's like there's that little gap before the chorus comes in so you're going boom ba boom boom ba boom boom ba boom boom come together and then it's into the chorus okay let's just do the chorus bit as well and then we can try that whole section because again the chorus is quite simple the chorus is really simple but it's again great part it's just kicks on one and three snares on two and four no hi-hats or anything so it's like gap at the end of the chorus so let's try that now with the song uh, from the beginning up to the end of the first chorus okay here we go Okay, cool. So hopefully that went well for you. Um, yeah, the, the, it sort of makes sense when you when you're listening. Make sure you listen and reference the track as well. And remember, I've got the the um, chart is in the description. So check through the chart. Um, that's there's one other bit basically. There's kind of this after the chorus, after the second chorus. I think it is. It might be the third is this kind of sort of wig out rip out kind of section and we're we're on a we're on a crashy symbol or a ride symbol um and the it's it's like a really nice laid back kind of groove and the the pattern back beats on two and four and the kick drums are on one and one and and then three so it sounds like this cool so that's that's the rip out kind of wig out section um and there's some drum fills in there he's kind of generally what he's doing is he's putting drum fills in every two bars um towards the end of that first wig out section so i think the first four bars are just just straight groove keeping that nice and straight and swinging he's always got a nice kind of swing to his playing and then the last four bars, every two bars, we're doing these kind of Ringo fills, which I always think are, they sound so ad-libby. So it's like, 
I try not to like sit down and exactly work out what he's playing, but just it's a feel thing. It's a real just try and listen to it and kind of come up with your own kind of Ringo esque feels. But essentially, what he's doing is on beat three and is kind of where the drum feel usually starts. So not on three, three and. So it's just after three. So if I play that, um, sorry about that, pinging. If I play that groove and then do do just a couple of Ringo-esque fills every, every two bars. So here we go. Yeah, so those, that gives you a chance to kind of really get into the Ringo vibe. Um, and then at the end of the track, is the, the, this riff out section, this outro section happens, which is the same, the same idea. It's a bit longer. I think it's, I don't know why I'm looking over there, but it's much longer and more drum feels. But just, just kind of listen to it and just kind of feel out with it because I don't think it's necessarily about breaking down and working out all those Ringo feels because they're cool, but they change every time. So it's like, it's really an ad libby thing. So just try and get in with it. So enough baff waffling from me, baffle, waffle, baffle. So let's try the whole track now. Here we go.
Cool, so I hope that went well for you at home uh, or wherever you are. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and all your comments and everything. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time in the next one. Thanks.